Hi there. This is a paper titled Distilling the Knowledge in a Neural Network and is the first one in the series on knowledge distillation papers. The paper was written by Jeffrey Hinton, Oriol Vinals, and Jeff Dean. All three of them are the champions of machine learning and AI. The paper was presented at NIPS 2014 as part of the Deep Learning and Representation Learning Workshop. Since this is the first paper to bring the concept of knowledge distillation mainstream, it is no surprise that it has a lot of citations. With that said, let's explore the motivations behind this paper. The authors start the paper with a very interesting analogy to explain the notion that the requirements for training and inference could be very different. The analogy given is that of a larva in its adult form and they say that uh, the requirements of nourishment for the larva and the adult form are quite different and it is true. We can easily understand that during training we are desperate to solve the problem at hand. It's our first priority and we will employ multitude of techniques and tricks to achieve the goal. That is the goal of learning parameters of the model. For example, you could use an ensemble of networks which is proven to work for many different kinds of problems. You could use dropout to generalize better, increase the depth of neural network, use a larger data set and many other tricks and techniques. It is also important to appreciate that during this quest to learn, the mechanics of machine learning is such that, that it will explore various paths, which while crucial for learning may not be needed during the inference phase. This brings us to the requirements for inference where along with accuracy, the runtime performance that is the speed of the prediction plays an important role as well. See, if your product is not usable because it is slow, then however accurate it is, it would not matter. Now, this is not the first time this kind of a problem is being discussed. The notion of training simple networks that use the knowledge of a cumbersome model was demonstrated by Rich Karuna and his colleagues. And I will explain their work in the prior art section. Uh, for now, the cumbersome model is a model which has a lot of parameters or is an ensemble of models and is generally difficult to set up and run on devices with less computing resources. Since the goal here is to extract the information from the big model or an ensemble of models to a new simpler model with less parameters while removing the not needed information the authors called it knowledge distillation. Next, let's briefly look at the prior art. The paper is extremely light in terms of references cited. You can see that there are only nine papers that have been cited. And really, from the point of the technique and the concept that they are introducing, only one prior paper is of somewhat relevance. And it is the paper titled Model Compression from Dr. Karuna from the year 2006. In the paper, Hinton refers to the model compression and gave them the credit for proving that it is possible to extract the information from cumbersome models and provide it to a simpler model. So this is a re really the first reason why the paper from Rich Karuna has been cited. There is another place in the paper that we will explore, explore in a detail in a bit where Hinton says that in many ways the technique that he is proposing is actually a generalization of the scheme used in the model compression paper. This way the contributions of this paper, the distillation paper, are very generic and conceptual in nature and the model compression paper from Karuna can be considered as one specific case of it. Here are some results showing how root mean squared error looks between an assembled artificial neural network and a single network on various data sets. So this table is taken from the model compression paper. 
Another table from the same paper uh, shows the gain in the performance. With this taken care of, let's start to look at the most interesting parts of this paper and learn the key insights from the paper. Now here is the little challenge. The key insights will only make sense if you have a good intuition and are aware of the mathematical properties of the softmax function, which is at the very core of the insights from the paper. Therefore, I'm going to first take few minutes to explain in detail what softmax is and why it is needed. So here is your typical deep neural network. Well, not deep enough by modern standards, but still good enough for our exploration. Uh, this is the input layer. There are a bunch of hidden layers with some activation functions. And for this discussion, we do not care the type of activation functions in these layers. The final layer or the output layer is called the logic layer. It has three neurons, which means that we have three classes. The most important part about this layer is that it has a softmax activation function applied to the output of the neurons in this layer. Here's a little animation showing the flow of input to in the network. Uh, as you can see, some neurons are firing and, and or maybe we have a dropout in our network. Uh, this is what the softmax function looks like. Essentially, you use exponential function on all outputs of the neurons and then you normalize the value for each neuron. So, so here QI uh, will correspond to, to Q1, Q2 and Q3. So you will essentially end up having a vector of size 3 where each entry in that vector is computed using this formula, using this softmax function. But why softmax? What I have told you so far is what softmax is, what its formula looks like, but not why softmax. So let's understand that part as well. Now what we can do is that instead of answering why softmax, we can also try to address why exponential function and why normalization, because if you think about it, the softmax function is doing the exponentiation and then doing the normalization. So if we can understand why exponential and why normalization, then we would get our answer. So the answer to both of these questions is that we desire a probability distribution as the output. That is the vector that we get from the last layer. The vector of size 3 in the last example should be a probability distribution. Since we are seeking a probability distribution, there are two properties that it should uh, have. First and foremost, all the entries in a probability distribution are supposed to be positive. And when you add all these entries, they should all sum to one. So this is where we take help from an exponential function because exponential function can take both positive and negative real numbers, but the output is always a positive real uh, number. That's why I'm saying it makes negative reals positive. And normalization is what transforms the vector into the distribution. So you may now wonder why do we need a probability distribution? We need it because in classification problems, we formulate our labels or ground truth as distribution. So here the ground truth for class number two is shown and it is shown as a one hot vector. It's a one hot vector, but if you look at it, it's a probability distribution as well, where the class two has gotten all the probability. On the right hand side, we have the output from the softmax. Uh, and now that we have these two distributions, what we could do is that we could use them as the input to our loss function. The loss function is the famous cross entropy loss function and the objective becomes to minimize this loss function. So this is a reason why softmax works and why softmax is needed. Let's see some code to get a better visual. Here I have a vector with three values 
and I am applying the exponential function on this vector. The result shows a new vector but this is not a probability distribution as the entries do not add to 1. The magic of the exponential function or the utility of the exponential function in this in this case is really to 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 take the values in your logits and if they are negative more specifically then they would be converted to the positive reals as we discussed earlier next we normalize the the the, the values that we got earlier and here the important thing to note is that the larger values are given a higher probability so here we have the output after applying the softmax function to our vector our logits vector now we are finally ready to appreciate the key insights from the paper you see softmax really works well for cross entropy loss however it has one issue which is that in the process of giving importance to the most likely class it pushes the rest of the class towards very small values the paper talks about the notion that in hand digit classification it is possible that an example image of 2 is closer or similar to an example image of 3 than it is to that of 7 how close or similar it is of quite importance to understand what the network is learning the key insight here is that softmax function tends to hide the relative similarity between the other classes and this information if available could play a vital role in learning the distilled networks. The second key insight is about how to highlight these relative similarities between the examples of classes while still using the softmax function. So, to do that, the authors figure that if we make the values of our logits lower, that is output of the neurons before passing them to the exponential function, then you get a smoother distribution. Smoother here means that unlike regular softmax, there is not a big spike corresponding to one entry. To make the output of the logits lower, you now need, to need a number to divide them. That number has a symbol called T which is shown there and the authors called it the temperature. The higher the temperature, the smoother the distribution because this is making your logic smaller. The analogy here is that with distillation where you use a temperature to distill the impurities, here you are removing the not needed information. Now this should be taken with a grain of salt because you may not want a value of T which could completely destroy your information. Very much like during the distillation if you have an inappropriate temperature you are not only getting rid of impurities but the desired elements as well. So the value of T is important but this value is something that you find by experimentation and this is why it acts as a hyperparameter. Next we look at some code to see it visually. To see it visually so here what I have done is that I have taken four values of T uh, T equals to 1 makes it a regular softmax notice as we increase the values of T the distribution in the vector gets smoother and smoother that is closer to each other This brings us to understanding how it works, that is the experimental setup that the authors used. There are two important things to note here. First is that to train your distilled model, you need two objective functions now. One objective function is your regular softmax function and the other is the one that compares the smooth logits of the original model with the smooth logits of the distilled network. The smooth logits are also called soft labels, whereas the hard labels are your regular vanilla ground truth label. There is a lot of things going on in this section with the formulas and, and whatnot, and it is easier to visualize it using a picture. So here comes the picture showing how the training setup uh, looks like. 
please note that this figure is not from the paper and and also notice the usage of words teacher and student actually the paper does not define these two terms there is no mentioning of them the teacher model is essentially your original cumbersome model or the ensemble of models and the student model is the distilled model that is the one that you would want to run for faster inference times what this figure is showing that you change the softmax of teacher network to use a certain temperature you need to find the value of temperature by experimentation as i mentioned earlier uh, these smooth logits that you get after applying the softmax of, of from the teacher model they are called soft labels on the student side you see that there is a fork now that is happening uh, in one fork the softmax uses the same temperature as that of a teacher and the output of that is called soft predictions so you have soft labels you have soft predictions and you're going to use a loss function to compare these these two things and obtain the loss that will be used for the supervision of your student network the regular branch the other branch uh, tries to do the regular softmax based uh, classification so you get the hard prediction you and you have the hard labels or the ground truth label and you apply the cross entropy loss function here so uh, setup is actually very simple nothing fancy going on here it's a multi objective loss function that you end up using so let's look at some of the results uh, in terms of the experimentations they use amnist and speech recognition here are the results for amnist there are three numbers right now uh, on the slide 67 146 and 74 67 is the number of errors that the original cumbersome network uh, had or the your teacher network had 146 is is the error given by a smaller network when trained from scratch and 74 is the number of errors number of test errors that were given by the distilled network or the student net network so as we can see that at least on amnist the it worked and uh, the the theory worked the interesting was the one that they did on the speech recognition and in this case they were using the real data and the example for training models for voice search in android and here the results are very impressive as you can see that their baseline model had a test accuracy of 58.9 percent and they also had an ensemble of 10 models which was which was giving them an accuracy of 61 percent and whereas the distilled single model that they ran had an accuracy of 60.8 percent so it really really worked well we are at the end of this paper reading in conclusion i would say that this is a very insightful paper and is the foundational paper that started a new research area this is a big deal the authors have done a very good job at explaining the concepts by giving interesting analogies not only that they also did experiment to prove their theory as well and for that i would give this paper no less than five stars if you have questions and comments please feel free to send them my way and i would try my best to provide required explanations with that i thank you for your time and patience hope you learned something new i sure did bye bye